Welcome to the CME webcast, the third in a series of three that explores topics relevant to cyclin dependent kinase or CDK4 and 6 inhibition in breast cancer. I'm Dr. Mark Pegram from Stanford University where I direct the breast oncology program and co-direct the translational oncology program. In this webcast, I will briefly review the mechanism of action of CDK4 and 6 inhibitors. Then I'll present information on ongoing clinical trials being conducted on abemocyclib and ribocyclib. We'll start with this animated video showing the role of cyclin D1 CDK4-6 pathway and the mechanism of action of CDK4 and 6 inhibitors. In order to better understand the biology of the signaling pathways and how they relate to the mechanism of action of CDK4-6 inhibitors, we have prepared some animation that illustrate these points. One approach to treating advanced estrogen receptor positive breast cancer is by targeting the cell cycle. In a healthy cell, the cell cycle is well controlled. However, in a cancer cell, the cell cycle is deregulated from mutations or upstream signals, causing cancer cells to proliferate at faster rates than healthy cells. For example, in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer cells, the deregulation of the cell cycle is caused by the overexpression and overactivation of growth factor and estrogen receptor pathways. When these pathways become activated, they instigate a cascade of mitogenic signals. A wide variety of mitogenic signaling pathways converge at the level of cyclin D1 messenger RNA and protein upregulation. Cyclin D1 binds to and activates cell cycle dependent protein kinases, or CDK, 4 and 6. The activated cyclin D1 CDK4-6 complex mediates the phosphorylation and inactivation of the tumor suppressor retinoblastoma protein. In a normal state, activated RB protein inhibits the cell cycle from progressing through the G1 phase. The phosphorylation of the RB, or retinoblastoma protein, releases E2F transcription factors from the protein complex, causing the cell cycle to progress from G1 to S phase and resulting in cancer cell proliferation. There are three selective ATP competitive inhibitors that have been developed to target the cyclin D1 CDK4-6 complex. These small molecule inhibitors block the cyclin D1 CDK4-6 complex and prevent the phosphorylation of RB protein. This stops the cell cycle from progressing to the S phase, preventing cell cancer proliferation or growth. In addition to causing transient G1 cell cycle arrest, preclinical evidence suggests that these inhibitors can also cause senescence and apoptosis. Targeting the cell cycle with CDK4-6 inhibitors is a promising treatment option for patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer. This slide illustrates CDK4-6 inhibitors that are either approved by the FDA already or currently in clinical development. Palbociclib was the first in class to win FDA approval back in February 2015 for treatment of ER positive metastatic breast cancer. Another CDK4-6 inhibitor in Clinical development in phase 1b and beyond is abemocyclib. Uh, in the phase 1b abemocyclib uh, study, hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer patients were enrolled, including both HER2 positive and HER2 negative disease in this phase 1b trial. Cohorts received abemocyclib 150 to 200 milligrams every 12 hours, along with either letrozole, anastrozole, tamoxifen, exomustane, exomustane in combination with everolimus, or indeed in one cohort with trastuzumab for the HER2 positive subjects. In terms of uh, prior therapy, no prior chemotherapy for metastatic disease was allowed in parts A through E. However, uh, one or more chemotherapy regimens for metastatic disease was allowed in the HER2 positive cohort in part F. In contrast to palbociclib, Abemocyclib dosing can be given continuously until progression with no dose interruption. These are the efficacy uh, data from the phase 1b abemocyclib trial. Uh, these are the tumor responses according to RESIST criteria. As you can see in part A, though there were no objective partial or complete responses, there were long-term disease control rates uh, in excess of 50% observed in this cohort. 
in Part B, uh, there were two partial responses observed, and again, a very high fraction of stable disease uh, at 75% for a total of partial response plus stable disease of 88%. In Part C, involving 16 subjects, again, we saw some partial responders, and again, a high fraction, 63% of stable disease as best response, so disease control rates of 75%. For Part D, uh, if you look at all patients, there were 13 patients who had, I'm sorry, 13% of patients that had partial responses, including 25% who had stable disease for a disease control rate of just over 50%. And in Part E, uh, there were no objective clinical responses and just one patient with stable disease for a disease control rate of just 17% in the HER2 positive subset population. Now in terms of pharmacokinetics and adverse events and clinical tolerability of abemocyclib, oral dosing achieved concentrations associated with target inhibition in preclinical model systems. There was no evidence of drug-drug interaction with either letrozole or anastrozole in this study. In terms of tolerability and common adverse events, the most common adverse events were fatigue and effects on the hematopoietic system as well as the GI system. There was less effect on the hematopoietic system than palbociclib, felt perhaps uh, to be due to having less activation or impact on CDK6 inhibition as opposed to CDK4 inhibition, uh, whereas palbociclib uh, probably has more CDK6 inhibition compared to abemocyclib. Tolerability of abemocyclib in combination with either letrozole or anastrozole was limited by the occurrence of diarrhea, leading to dose reduction. Ongoing abemocyclib studies include the MONARCH-2 study, which is currently recruiting. This is a phase three trial, which will compare the progression-free survival for women with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer receiving either abemocyclib plus fulvestrin or fulvestrin alone. The MONARCH-3 trial, which is also currently recruiting, is also in phase three. This will evaluate how effective non-steroidal aromatase inhibitors are plus abemocyclib in postmenopausal women with local regionally recurrent, not amenable to curative treatment, or metastatic breast cancers with no prior systemic therapy. In terms of ongoing ribocyclob studies, the Mona Lisa II trial is recruiting. This is a phase three effort, which will evaluate the efficacy of ribocyclob in combination with letrozole in postmenopausal women with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer who received no prior therapy for advanced disease. The Mona Lisa III trial, also ongoing accrual in phase three, will evaluate the efficacy of ribocyclib in combination with fulvestrin in postmenopausal women with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer who received no or just one prior line of endocrine therapy. The Mona Lisa 7 trial is an ongoing ribocyclib study, which will evaluate the efficacy of ribocyclib or placebo in combination with tamoxifen and gasarilin, or a non-steroidal AI and gasarilin in premenopausal women with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancers. In terms of the landscape of the CDK inhibitor class, shown are the agents that have selectivity for cyclin-dependent cyclin kinase 4 and 6, including the three that we reviewed in this presentation, palbociclib, abemocyclib, and ribocyclib. In addition, there are further CDK inhibitors in ongoing clinical development, including those that have selectivity for alternative CDKs, including 1, 2, 4, 6, 5, 7, 9, uh, and those are shown uh, in the bottom of the slide. And as shown also, some of these are still in early clinical development while one has advanced to phase three. In summary, both abemocyclib and ribocyclib in combination with antiestrogen therapy are being investigated in ongoing phase three studies. Many of these studies are actively recruiting subjects. Other CDK inhibitors that target a variety of CDK targets are also being investigated in the clinic. Look for emerging data on these agents to be presented at major oncology meetings in the future. With that, I thank you for your participation in this webcast. I hope it will enrich your practice 
and I encourage you to participate in the other two webcasts in this series.